Welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. My name is Susie, and this is an amazing Sunday evening. And it was a beautiful Sunday. The sun was shining. I was outside working. I got so much done outside. Johnny Bag of Donuts helped me out, too. So what a great thing that was. Whew. How is everybody today? Can't wait to talk a little bit more about CO2. But before we get started, let's see if this sound actually is happening. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey everybody, it's Susie Q, so come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q. And let's hope that audio video worked. Oh my goodness. That cracks me up every time I see that picture of me imitating funk. <laughs> mm. Let me turn off my little bubbles. Well, hello, Crib Keeper Aquatics. How are you? Let's see who else we have. Lefty. A hotel Wi Fi sucks. Oh keep buffering. That sucks. But at least you had fun, right? I'm a little jealous. Okay, I'm a lot jealous. Taylor's Aquatics and Exotics. What's up? Skull Aquatics. Hey, everybody. Sandy, what's going on? Sound and video is good, y'all. That's what I like to hear. Holy cow. Because it's not always as we know. Rob's Aquarium Room. Good evening, everybody. Mystery Snail Guardians. I am a snail. That's so funny. Oh my God, that's so adorable. I had such a good time today. For once, it wasn't freezing. It wasn't raining. I was able to go outside and work a little bit on the pond in the yard. I wanted to go live by the pond tonight, but right around 4.30, 5.30, clouds are rolling in. The dark, what is it, cumulus nimbus clouds. I'm about to get a storm. And then I talked to um, Monica Lynn at uh, MLP, and she said it was already raining down there, so that was probably on the way up here. Stephen P203, what's up? Let's get gassy. That's right. That's right. Let's get a little gassy. Al Wet Socks. Love the Wet Socks. What? Although, if I have Wet Socks, I must take them off. They must be removed. <laughs> Especially skating. Benoxy, what's going on? New local Austin. Susan, everyone here. Spaghetti, no, no. <gasps> Spaghetti? Who doesn't love Spaghetti? Greeting, Spaghetti. I don't think I've ever seen your name before. And you have a beautiful kitten. I'm so excited. <gasps> I put in the application and a request today to um, foster or adopt a husky eight month old Ooh, wish me luck wish me luck oh my gosh as soon as i saw the picture john and i knew it was it it was it it was it it's one of the three breeds we've been looking at but we didn't want to get a brand new puppy we kind of wanted to find a dog that needed a home what do you know up today came this beautiful husky that needs a home so uh, and then of course there's that always that well tell me about yourself hear that the ghosts are here so that was a little awkward but i did said hey to michael dennis hello hello scuba stevo aquatics what's hot michelle e is saying hey to everyone this is great cj black what's going on cj did i miss anybody i think i may have got oh i love that scuba stevo's Uh, 
Uh, Skeddy said, thanks. I think I found you from Skippers. Who doesn't love Skippers stream, huh? If I wasn't lying down pretending to take a nap because John and I did yard work today. We drained the pond about a third of the way, power washed the rocks that were exposed, skimmed, and it was backbreaking. It was backbreaking. And I got a couple other pumps going and found out that two of my pumps are broken. I thought I could just get a new impeller, but they're broken beyond repair. There's Monica Lynn. We were just talking about you. Ricky De Hoyas. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I am drinking out of this mug. This is not a for sale mug. This is me because who doesn't love Susan SLC Aquatics? Fish fam, mom, hello, everybody, right? Well, I do, but I was making her mugs and I struggled a bit with her beautiful blue. And it's got a tint of purple and she is just so sweet. She uh, said she loved it anyway, just the way it was. But this is 12 times I tried to make that beautiful blue. So this was my testing mug. So I drink out of it all the time. Um, Ricky says, you're looking nice today. Thank you, Susan Q, with your pearls and all. Why, thank you kindly. I love me some pearls, even though these are sterling silver. Love me some pearls. I do, I do. It just, it just makes me happy. I don't, isn't that bizarre? It, whatever makes you happy, right? I mean, life is too short not to be happy. Oh. So yeah, so we were out there scrubbing. I still got pond poop all over me, I'm sure, because I decided to take a turn at the power washing. And of course, as soon as I started power washing, whatever gunk I was hitting just came right back at me. Right back at me, man. Aye, lunatic fringe. What is going on there, sir? So, oh, and let me show you. Now, this is, there's no hot and cold water yet, but my John Baga hooked that sink into the sump. So now I can drain right from the 180. I can just do, and, and I am doing mega water changes on this 180. Mega water changes. Let's see. Um, and let me tell you why I got to do mega water changes on this, because it has no filtration. It has uh, some sponge filters, but my canister blew out. I still can't get it to work. So I am working on the sump. Do you guys want to see what I've been trying to figure out? Let me show you. It's not easy being Susie, let me tell you. It's not easy being green. So I go through buckets of these. These are one inch, three quarters inch elbows. Oh. I'm, do, I'm doing it, guys. I'm doing it. And then a whole bucket of John Bag of Donuts has in his HVAC truck tons of beautiful plastic pieces. And I found out about bulkheads, these in particular. Some come with slip, which means it's super smooth, and I can just stick the PVC in and slip. I can just stick the PVC up. Or it comes with slip and thread. Or it comes with thread and slip. Or it comes with thread and thread. Well, I don't think I knew that when I bought them, so I've got four different bulkheads for my four openings, and they're all different. Two of them are one inch. Two of them are three-quarter inch. But if it kills me, that 180, hopefully by the end of tomorrow, will have filtration because I can't keep doing water changes. I love you guys, but I just can't keep doing water changes like that. But, and I'm not even throwing the water out anymore. I'm moving the water over to the pond, this pond over here, and then, and then taking out the water of the pond. Like I'm using it because it's not, uh, it's just too much, it's too much water movement. Too much water movement. Uh, um, Ricky, okay. Now I'm parked. Hey, Bob Skull. Good, good, good. Whomever else I missed. I'm so glad to be home. I bet you are, Paul. 
Uh, Alishan, did you like the CO2 talk last night? Nicer, Rob, to donate the system to the club. Yes, I was just about to talk about the CO2 business. So because I was given this CO2 canister, along with some beautiful, I think a do over a dozen stir buys, Cory cats, and a couple of plants and some substrate. But this CO2 intrigued me. I've always been petrified of it. Trying to learn about it, and lo and behold, one of our local fish stores is having a talk on CO2. Oh, just in time for Susie Q to pay attention. And boy, I sat right up front, and I listened to everything he said. I took screenshots of almost every page of his presentation to understand a little bit more. Now, I know the CO2 that he had had a lot more bells and whistles, but I do know that that's a solenoid. And that's what I remember, oh, that on my own without looking up and these two little gauges test pressure in, pressure out, and the solenoid, that's what I remember. So I don't have a bubble counter. I don't have, this is all I have, but at the end of the talk, they were doing a giveaway. Now there was only what, a couple dozen of us there, if that, right? So I'm thinking to myself, my chances are good. Oh my gosh, for a system that had everything, one number off. And don't you know, the guy behind me who won is like, Dag, I knew I was gonna win. I'm like the only one in the room that can't use it. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. This is like five, $600 worth of equipment that was given away and he can't use it. And guess what he did? He donated it to the Aquarium Society how sweet is that? How sweet is that? That is amazing. Oh, look at Greg Jones is in the house. Get slip inside and thread on the outside so you can always take them off without cutting the hard line. That's kind of what I figured because as I was piecing together all these PVCs, I noticed that if there was the thread on the bottom, I could just undo it, right? But I, I am going to get a union for right above the pump. Also right above the pump, that's going to shoot up into two locations. T, up. I am going to put, um, what do you call it, where the water can't drip out of a sponge filter? I'm going to put one of those on there. Because I'm so afraid after what happened last time with this 180, water everywhere, inches of water everywhere. Poor... Oscars were like, <laughs> they're all good now. Um, uh, air, oh God, why can't I think of it? It doesn't matter. I know what it is. Words escape me. Can you believe that? I talk all the time and words escape me. Uh, let's see if somebody came up with those words. Oh, he says he's looking at the equipment now. How cool is that? How cool is that? So yeah, so, and I want all my pipes to be, all my things, to come down six inches and everything to be around six inches and then everything can drop down so I don't have to be on the ground trying to fix it and it'll be up, up, up a little bit. I have the sump all ready and rare to go. I don't know if I have a pump. I think in my shed, but now two of my ponds pump broke, but none, neither of those were going to be like the mag pump I'm thinking of. So I think I have a mag pump that I alternate with my 120 upstairs. But this is going to be exciting trying to put this together. Now the back overflow is very dirty. Oh, I wish the camera was pointed on my 180. My Bashir Ornata, Polypterus Ornata is out and about and just so beautiful. Let's see if this will work. Oh my gosh, I get so sidetracked being here. Isn't that a beauty? Of course, I didn't put a good camera on him. He's right under the Oscar looking at us, looking around. Oh, I love that polypterus. I do, I do. Oh my gosh, and I, I'm so distracted all the time. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to focus. Focus. Because yes, I was talking about building the sump. Because right now, without filtration on this 180, I, I'm so scared that these fish are... Something's going to happen, and I'll forget after a couple days, and 
So I have to get this made and the back overflow is so dirty and I can't reach in there. So I have one of those, I'll sit in my chair and grab something off the uh, shelf clamp things. I'm gonna put a microfiber towel and try to clean the bottom from on top. And then I'll get from the bottom up top and try to clean it really good before I use these fancy, fancy ass bulkheads. And I've been watching video after video on this BRS. I watched the saltwater videos on it. That's where I learned about the slip thread, thread, slip, 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 slip. The rubber goes on the top. The nut comes up and this is how it's going to sit. Now these outside threads are only for the nuts, but this has inside threads as well. So I can, so I don't have to cut the PVC. Thank you, Greg. That is what I'm going to do. And hopefully I will be able to do this without John Bag of Donuts help. Uh, cutting PVC is very hard for me. I even have one of them fancy ass uh, cutters, but uh, my wrist just don't work so good. So that's the one E. There's so much going on. So I got my sink, not the sink for water, but the sink to dump my water. It goes right into the sump now. So even if I just got a little piece of gutter and put it up here, I can change the water over in there and over there and just let it fall in the slop sink. Now in my slop sink, I have a sock that the water is going through so right now. So I'm not filling up my sump with any, any gunk yet because right now the sump is perfect. And I don't want to mess that up. Don't want to mess it up. Susie has awesome member content. Oh, you are awesome member. You are awesome. And you have an awesome guest tonight. Rack Cross? Like, what? What? Let's see. Like, the one and only Rack Cross on live stream right after me. We're going to be at Taylor's Aquatics and Exotics with his... Tennessee Mafia panel, which I am Susie Softtail <clears throat> from my motorcycles. So, so they say. Oh, oh. And Rack Cross is a special guest. I'm so excited. So excited. Um, hey. So yeah, we gotta go. Catch y'all on the replay. Thank you, CJ. Thanks for stopping in. Why complicate your life further with that contraption? Here's why, Patty. I have that beautiful 75 gallon aquarium over there, deep bedded, one and a half inches of soil, one and a half inches of sand on top. As many plants as I can steal from all of my aquariums. I just took plants, I took Bucephalandra, I took anything I could find from every one of my, and put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of red, a little bit of pink. And right now there's only lemon tetras in there. And I can put those in my 20 gallon long. I can put those in 75 over there. If I thought it was that dangerous and just pump up the plant because I want that lush garden tank. But I gotta tell you, it's starting to look pretty snappy. Let's see, we're gonna do this again. Are you guys ready? This is a tank I wanna put it on, but I kinda got some concerning news at the, at the webinar. Concerning news. So I do want to talk about the pros and cons for a reason. So this is my 75. Now it is growing in. And that bulbitis in the back in the middle. I can't even imagine if I could get that into a bulbitis bush. Oh my goodness. And there's not some fancy in there. They're all, uh, what do you call it? Easy care plants. But this was given to me from somebody who was tearing down their fish room. So this is free to try out and experiment. And that's what I love doing in this hobby. I love to learn more stuff. Now I did have a little, a little CO2 kit one time. And when it was done, it was done. I didn't like it because there was no way for me to turn it on and off. And I kind of heard that you should have it on a little bit before the lights go on, while the lights are on and have it go off right before the lights go off. And last night confirmed that. And another positive would be just the lush garden. I want what I want when I want it and I want it now. I want that lush aquatic garden. And trust me, as you saw, it's not aquascaped. It's just, I put plants where I want to put plants and that's just like I do out of my garden. I just would, so could it be complicating? It could be, but I won't know until I try. 
So I'm going to put this on the timer with the lights at different times, stagger just a little bit. Although, so one of the negatives that he said is water agitation can almost like not counteract the CO2, have the CO2 escape faster. So I'd be wasting more CO2 and everything's on a linear piston air pump. Well, actually not back here. I still have to bring that back here. It's in my other room. But all my tanks, I'd say 90% of my tanks are linear piston air pump. I'm like, ah. Another pro, con, not sure. He didn't talk about how do you split this? How many tanks can I split it with? So I got so much to learn. So is it going to complicate my life or my fish keeping hobby? Maybe a little bit for a time period of the learning curve. Who doesn't love learning about this stuff, right? Like, what, Patrick Hardy, what's going on? And I'm very jealous. Okay, Alishan is holding the equipment for the club. This is going to be a great thing for the club, but this is what I have. And these are the parts that came with it. And I know I'm missing a bubble counter. And what he had, he had some other bells and whistles that were like a, like a controller. And he had talked about those bubbles with like RO water in it and they turn red, yellow, and green if there's too much, too little. That might complicate it a little bit. That might complicate it, but I don't think that's a necessary. I just don't know. But this is free. This is what I have. This will plug in the solenoid and this I'll plug into the timer. But I just have, and I, I don't think this is CO2 line. The way he was talking about, does it really matter? Does it really matter? I, so it was a big discussion on whether it's CO2 line or just regular um, rubber hose line, whatever, it's not rubber, silicone. So that cute little like 20 gallon or nano tank CO2 had a bubble counter on it. I might be able to utilize that in this. Diffuser, that was the other thing he had. If I could stop the top water agitation so much, might help. I could stare at that tank. Just I could just stare at that tank, which gave me the idea, because I'd love the 75 gallon heavily planted aquarium. How great would uh, my 120 upstairs be heavily planted, or this 180? The way he was talking about how fast his plants grow and that he chops them down and just takes them to the local store or worse, throws them away. I couldn't even hear those words without like, what the, what? How great would that be? Then I could start cultivating plants in this tank. So now one of the cons, I asked him, let's say you have all these lush, gorgeous plants and you take cuttings of them all because you're trimming them back and you put them in a tank without CO2. I said, are all the leaves going to die back? And he made a funny face that tells me probably with my interpretation of his face. <laughs> and he said, they're going to struggle for several weeks. So I don't know if everything that I grew in there, putting them in another tank, like to propagate lots of plants, because I just love the plants and putting them in another tank, if it would just kind of just do not be what I'm thinking it should be. You know what I mean? That's another con. It was okay, but very long day. I really enjoyed the wedding ceremony at the church and afterwards there was a meal. Ah, I went to a baby shower today. CO2 looks exciting. I am very excited about the learning process because I brought up one of the things that scared me is I heard some people who had CO2 and something happened with the regulator or something happened where the CO2 just filled the tank and all the fish died. I don't want to do that. I'm sure you're wrecked today, Paul. Yeah, that was a big day. It was big. Fishion Tactics, what's going on? There's my plant channel. Thank you very much. MLT posting my Q Aquatics. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. And there is the Kaler's live stream. Thank you. On the dirty sod, Paul. I freaking hate that. Ooh, on the dirty sod. What? I missed something there. It does matter. 
the non-CO2 grade stuff has gas permeable and the acid from the CO2 will erode the regular air line. So if you're holding this line, how would I tell? This is pretty hard. This isn't like, this is, yeah, this is in silicone. Is that, should I assume this is CO2 line? Cause this is very hard. This isn't like my airline can bend. I could tie it in a knot. I could tie it in a bow. I could throw it over my shoulder. Like come then a soldier to your ears hang low. But this one is so hard. I cannot do anything to, but it could be like old and dry. But do what, and he said the same thing. He says it's permeable. It does matter a bit, but the CO2 is so is not as expensive that if you go through too much and through his reasoning behind it was because he had tried to get it he was sold co2 line and it was wasn't it was silicone as well super sticker what 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 i have some colorful stuff super sticker from kaler's aquatics thank you very much bob and we've got a lemon head trumpeting and a little mini me a little mini me trumpeting is that what that is thank you thank you thank you bob you are awesome one step closer to that diffuser that's what i'm saying that looks like co2 line okay because the guy who gave it to me a really sweetheart um that looks like but how do you know the co2 lines is generally stiff hard plastic but if you still have packaging now this was given to me as is this is all used I gotta say, I'm a little nervous. I don't want to kill my fish. I would be willing to remove. Oh, my king pleco's over there too. Definitely gonna remove my king pleco first. I can find a home. And I, I thought because last night I couldn't sleep at all. Right, I was so upset about this 180, not having filtration. It was really bothering me that I couldn't grasp the dry sump that I could just go make it like this. Like I just was missing some things and my head wasn't clicking. I lost sleep over it. And three o'clock in the morning, I'm down here in my fisherman. I look over and the King Pleco is just out. Beautiful black and white stripe, gorgeous, out on the wood, not hiding at all. So all I got to do is come down three o'clock in the morning. I can see my King Pleco anytime I want. <laughs> Oh my God, once you have the equipment, the CO2 is cheap. Greg's Planet Tanks. Thank you, Greg. I do have the equipment. I do have, I think there is a diffuser and a bubble counter from that small tiny kit. So I don't know if the bubble counter has to be, you know, equate to the size of the tank. I don't know enough about that. I just know that small little kit, which was cute, adorable. I used it, shot my wad, one and done. That was it. I don't, I don't want it. And everything in that tank got high algae after it was, like, it was over. Like, I, yeah, that's the pros and that's the con. The diffuser is pretty inexpensive. 20 bucks. Perfect. 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 Uh-huh. But I'm trying to figure out, are there other cons to it? Besides what Patty said, it is a little bit more high maintenance. I have to be a little more aware, pay attention, which if you know me, you know that's a, not an extra commodity of mine, paying attention. <laughs> the plants could get used to them and then won't be okay if I don't keep continue it. I could hurt my fish if I don't, if I do something wrong. And some of the pros is I would have a lush full tank to have the problem of, oh my gosh, my plants grow so much, I can't keep up with the maintenance. I would love that. Let that be my problem. That it's so overgrown that I have to cut inches of it back and put them in other plant, other tanks. <laughs> How great would that be? You could buy black CO2 line, then you would not mix them up. Ah, where does one buy CO2 line? How do I know? Because he said he got stuff on amazon that said co2 and he said it wasn't co2 line it was silicone so i don't want to get cheated or ripped off because 
being ignorant, not you know, not knowing what I need to know yet, it's very easy for that to happen. Scary, both my airline and CO2. My my uh, airlines are black also. First, I took advantage of Corey when he had kinks in an airline. The whole lot of them had kinks in them, so he sold them dirt cheap. But like so many of them. Because I can work around the kinks, trust me. I can work around the kinks, and and I have, and they work great. He just didn't want that to be part of his reputation, selling kinky. Hose line? Does that, that didn't sound right, Corey? I'm sorry if it didn't sound right. That's not what I meant, but you know. But I took advantage of that, and once I started using the black line, I'll never go back. I will never go back. First of all, that black line that he sells anyway is so silicone. It's so pliable. It blends in, and now for this room, I've painted it all black. Every wall, all the walls are black, so that I can. I don't have to do the back of every tank, although that has a backing. This doesn't. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. Because I'm counting on the black cords and the black lines kind of blending in. You will also need some fertilizer to go with that CO2. So now we're getting complicated. Mr. Greg's Planted Aquarium. Would any of those fertilizers be like a, ooh, squirt, 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 that's all I need? Or is it going to be like, I imagine like Lucas Bretz taking out all his 25,000 fertilizers and knows what to dose, what, when, and how, and my attention span isn't that, that big. It's definitely not. Kinky, I know. I said kinky. Don't you dare tell Corey. Too much plant material. It's a great problem to have, isn't it, Stephen? Like, how great would that be? Like, if I was complaining, like, oh, my gosh, my bulbitis is so big, it's taking up the whole 75-gallon. <laughs> gas supply. What, I lost that. It went so fast. What happened to gas supply? Oh, yeah, Monica, post your, uh, post your plant site, MLT. Where was a gas supply places? I don't know what that even means. Home brew shops, not a clue. I don't know either of those stores, Mark, yet. Gas supply. Like who would go there for that? Like who would go to a gas? Like what? what is that? If that's a thing? <laughs> not sure if it comes in blue, does come in clear. Dirted tanks. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dirty tanks. Set them all up the same day. 75, 40 gallon, two 10 gallons, two five gallons, two and a half gallon, and a partridge and a pear tree. Two 20 lawns. Very heavily organic dirt. I had diatomaceous earth. I had um, peat moss, like lush, lush smelled delicious earth-like dirt and then I topped it with pool filter sand and I planted all the aquariums. I didn't buy too many plants although I did buy some of those in a cup plants where it looks like there's nothing but you have like 12 plants. I, I got some of those but for the most part I went and robbed all my tanks of different plants. Like I took some of the, and then I got some amazing valicinaria, two different kinds from MLTs plants and that's Monica Lynn and those valves are doing great. The first thing I did is a haircut and cut it down below the water line. It's already up and over and that's without CO2. So Patty, you might have a point there. Susie Q, you've been listening to the Rolling Stones. Oh, I want to paint it black. I saw the stones in person and I had marks on my eyes from the binoculars. That's how close I was. It was Bridges to Babylon. I don't even know how long ago that was. Susie Q, how are you? Whip Squirrel, what's going on? Whip! Whip it good. Da -na 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 -na. You can whip it. I can't figure out how to copy my own Instagram link, Bob. <laughs> I can share other people's. It's MLT Plants on Instagram or at MLT Plants, or at Aqua Designs by MLT. How cool. 
my bulbitis is so big. How big is it, right, Finn Wiggles? Finn Wiggles. I'm going to say that over and over now. Finn Wiggles. Here's what I imagine. If you, if you, can, if you follow Rachel O'Leary, which I do, big fan, big fan, she had this bulbitis that was so humongous when she was tearing down a tank and I was just like, what? That's what I want someday. CO2 line comes in blue, sold in beer making. So I got to find a beer making. Okay, beer making. I am yet to install my CO2 as I can't afford to run it properly yet. What does that mean to you, Fintatical? Did I say it right? Fintaticals. Fintaticals. What do you mean run it properly? Like with a solenoid or with a controller? Because a controller will tell you what your pH levels is. And if the pH gets too high, it stops the CO2. And it gets too low, it'll start it back up again. So you really don't need a timer with light because it'll kind of regulate it that way. Or are you talking those little bubbles with the add chemicals to that change it red, green, and yellow if it's good? Or are you talking that you don't have all the bells and whistles, the regulators and all that stuff? Because I feel very blessed that this was given to me. And I wasn't sure what this was until last night, watching this, this seminar, the, the talk, as he explained every single solitary piece, his experience with it. And he wasn't saying his is the only way, one or done. It was his experience with it, which was so good, what didn't work for him and what did, which is why he came up with that silicone thing. Yes, you're going to lose CO2 because it is permeable, but sometimes it's very hard to find. But now that I know to look at who makes beer? Do people make their own beer? Eric Wyrock. Whoa, 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 whoa. I see some colors. What do we have here? $5. Eric Wyrock. We love Suzy Q. Oh, that's so sweet. You got That's so sweet. Oh, my God. Thank you. You make my day. You know, I belong to this clubhouse, right? Believe it or not, not everybody there likes me. Duh. <laughs> And I do practice, other people's opinion of me is none of my business. So if so-and-so hears that so-and-so said, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Because that's none of my business. And and I think that's why I love Sunday night so much. Because I get to, I feel like I'm with my people. Like, my people! So thank you, Eric. That was very sweet. Very, very sweet. I went to the Stones too. <laughs> I think I went to three concerts my whole life. And I'm in a rock band. But crowds, I get a little anxiety attacks happen. I I had I was had tickets to Farm Aid, Band Aid, Farm Aid, and I passed on them. I had to give them to somebody else the day. It's in Philadelphia, it was over 100 degrees, and there was no way. I went into a panic mode before I left the house. I'm like it's not gonna happen. I in the 70s. No comments from anybody, but in the 70s. I went to Hall & Oates concert in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And then one time I went on a pity date with somebody. And because he had, you know, candy that I liked. And it wasn't really candy, but, you know. If Nathan's watching, hi, Nathan. He's my nephew. But he had candy I liked. And so I went with him. But I had a 102-degree fever. Didn't enjoy it at all. And that was... Go black water, keep on rolling. Mississippi, who's that? Keep on rolling on. Go black water. That Doobie Brothers. Doobie Brothers. Do 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 doobies. That's it. That's it. Because crowd. Oh, I did see it. the one with the nice butt. Um, Bruce Springsteen. I saw him once. Uh, that was in the early '80s. That was in the early '80s. But yeah, I'm not a big. I love concerts. I love music. I love bands. I could dance all night long. Crowds, not a fan. Not a fan of a lot of people all up in my grill touching me and stuff. And then what if I have to go to the bathroom? Like, am I going to get lost there? Am I not going to, like, oh, no. It's just, I can feel myself now. Hold on. I can feel myself now already panicking, and I'm not going anywhere. Oh, my God. I can't even talk about it. Fin Wiggles. I get a little Fin Wiggles. Uh... Catfish Cave. Ah, Craig. What's going on, Craig? Craig is actually my ex-husband's name. There's not a lot of Craigs out there, are there? 
Craig, don't forget to slam the th thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's eating num num? <gasps> Carrie from Science Gal. Do you see my beautiful contraption? This is my CO2 setup. I'm going over the pros and cons. I can only see, so I'm so, so short-sighted. I can only see the pro of a beautiful, lush green plants overflowing my 75 gallon. That's what I see in my head, that it's hard for me to see the cons. And I know there's a lot, and I'm talking about them, but when I think of, oh my gosh, could you imagine if your plants just grow two or three times faster than they are now? But when he explained it, the guy at the talk, I forget his name, dag it. He explained it so well that I understood while he was talking everything. I took pictures, I was understanding. Afterwards, talking with other people, I still got, had a good grasp. By the time I got to the local fish store afterwards, I was losing some stuff in this brain of mine. By the time I came home to talk to John, I'm like, I'm missing some parts and pieces. Now I'm back to like, wait, what parts am I missing? So I think this little sieve up here I got, it just like kind of leaks out. I struggle in big crowds, yeah, man. Some people love that stuff. They just eat it up. Missed you this weekend, Bob. Bob, you didn't go? Doobie Brothers, worth going to with a fever. It was worth going to with a fever. It was, it was. You see it, right? Right, Carrie? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my King Pleco out. And I'm going to do it. Just in case I... F it up, like, because I don't, I'm not going to be able to get a controller. That's just, I mean, that, that's that up. I'm going to try to use the bubbler to count the bubbles. And now that I know it's related, the pH could be an indicator of too much. And then this one that says measures how much is in here. If that goes down too fast, of course, I have nothing to compare it to. I wouldn't know if it's going down too fast or too slow anyway. So I don't think that will help me. But I think the pH, if the pH rises and goes down. Now, I have the um, API test kit. Salt water and fresh water, high pH, low pH. I've already tested it. My water comes out at 6.8. There was a chart he explained, which I understood perfectly while he was explaining it. And that's all I got to say about that. I want to be around 30 something. PSI, PPM, not PPM. 30 something of CO2, but I add that to what my, you see now, I know, see it's already gone, but when he was explaining it, I understood it, and I knew that having a very neutral pH wasn't the best to scenes. I also knew that having linear piston air pump with a lot of water agitation wasn't the best scenario, but I thought to myself, then I think to myself, what a wonderful, I thought, let me try it. Oh my God, I get so sidetracked with song too. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. And I know I don't sing well. And Jimmy Crackhorn, I don't care. I don't care. It just comes out. It just comes out. I can't even help it. I got merch. I do have merch. Thank you, Michelle. I can't wait to see what results you get, Susie. I've never used CO2. I am so silly excited. I want to know, can I split it? Because I have the 40 gallon underneath that's not growing so good. It's got like an older light on it, but it's got like all the, all this, it's the exact same substrate, the exact same everything. It's everything is the same except for it's a 40 gallon, a little bit cooler because it's down lower. Neither one have heaters. I did put a little bit heavier plants on the top one. I don't know why it's not so good, but that has my cares fish in it. I don't want anything to have my cares fish. So I probably won't split it to the 40 gallon. But when those turtles, I got turtles in my tub over there, go outside, I do want to try to propagate plants. Finn Wiggles, I like saying that. I am more scared of CO2 than crowds. Yep. Finn, I can relate to that because that was one of the questions I asked. It's very scary. Not only scary, it's got, you know, scary labels on it. You know, like it's not, it's a scary idea. And then I've heard horror stories of people killing all their fish because something went wrong. But if I remove the fish, it's a, it's a, I just set this tank up not too long ago. 
I've only got my Lemon Tetras and my King Pleco. And my surprise hitchhiker is in there. Remember? I am looking in there and I think, what is this? What it looks like a little tiny baby coolie loach. What it was a little tiny polypterus. Little teeny tiny that I didn't buy. It's just in there. What a that's a great gift. Like you just hitchhike probably in on somebody one somebody's plants. Because I don't always buy those kind in the cup. I don't mind snails. I like snails. I like they like I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. So there are a lot of pros. There are a lot of cons. But one of the biggest pros, even if I have to remove all the fish before doing it, is the learning experience. One of the best things I love in this aquarium hobby is that there's so much that I can learn. So much, so, so many things that are different and new and exciting and there's all different levels and I can always go back to, oh, I like this pretty color fish. There's nothing wrong with that. It makes me happy to look at my my sorority and all the pretty betas swimming around. And just, that makes me happy too. But then when I can learn like where they're from, what their habitat is, how are they harvested? Are they, you know, captive born and bred? Or are they wild caught? What is their training? Or I listen to speakers who went swimming in the lakes of Africa and you know the lake malawi victoria like i talk to people who go swimming there with the real fish and show me slides of that like it's just fascinating after fascinating after fascinating so this is just like another avenue that i don't want to say i'm going to conquer because it might conquer me but it's not going to hurt any of my fish because I'm going to make sure if I feel like that, I will remove the tetras and the king pleco and that little tiny, little, little tiny polypterus. And I say polypterus because I don't know if it's a bashir, biker, a, a biter. So I just call it a polypterus. It's easier for me. I have a glass. I will try to jump in. Need to drive now. Oh, do not be texting while driving, woman. Patrick Hardy, I've been smoking. You are smoking those marble red half of my lifetime. I know I'm going to need one of those CO2s one day. Oh, you're going to need O2. <laughs> yeah. Now, this whole house is wired for oxygen because I took care of my mom the last decade of her life, and she loved to come in the basement. So I threaded oxygen lines from the, the big tank upstairs all down the basement. So if she walked down the stairs, she didn't have this attached to her, not this, but didn't have it attached to her. She'd come down and plug in and she could do stuff over here, unplug, go to her art room, plug in. So she, she was like plug and play. So I did wire my house for oxygen for many years. So I can, I can relate to that very much so. I smoked for a long time two or three packs a day. That's what, when you could sit at your desk and smoke. You could smoke on airplanes. I think cigarettes were 60 or 70 cents. And I told myself, if they get up to a dollar a pack, that's ridiculous. I'm going to quit. And somebody told me like, what I used to pay for a carton is what they're paying for one pack of cigarettes a day. I was like, are you crazy? Nothing. That's, the crack isn't even that good. What? 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 Ah, oh, that's how I got here. I've done house plants, fruits, vegetables, gardens, and landscaping. So now I'm learning aquatic plants. Love the learning process. I'm doing aquaponics this year out at my pond. Speaking of landscaping, and I need to grow more greens for my turtles, my tort oh, my, my tortoises, my parrot, my bearded dragons. A lot of my animals eat greens every day. So I need to grow more, and I need to grow them in a manner of which I know that they're healthy. So I'm going to build some raised beds and I'm going to start off with the aquaponics. I've done little aquaponic projects, yeah, like a little overhang, flower pot, growing little tiny things here and there. But this is going to be a real aquaponic system I'm setting up. But today was my start of just getting the pond drained it one third of the way, power washed some of the rocks, 
scooped out some of the muck on the bottom. I still need lots of good muck on the bottom because I got the two turtles in there. And John wants me to put the, the second redder slider in there. I said, I'm not having, no. Right now I got two females in there, redder slider, yellow belly. Females, females. I don't need more to, these are rescued animals. I don't want to breed turtles that, I don't know anybody who wants a lifetime pet. Like, there's not a whole lot of people out there that want to take care of a turtle their whole life. There are a lot of people out there, though, that want to take care of those cute little turtles for a couple of years. I'm not going to support that. I can't support that. I don't have room to support that. <laughs> but yes, I in the house plants. Oh, my gosh. You see my living wall over there? It's a wall of shame. Death. Darkness is over there. Death and darkness. I It was a bad design. I set up my living wall. Gorgeous. Brought in these lush green plants from outside that were thriving. And it all went awry this winter. So I can't blame anything but me and the design. I did it. Death and destruction. Yeah, I think this the ZZ plants are the only thing that survived over there. Uh, everything's got to go outside. I got to wash everything off with uh, the neem oil, get them all cleaned up, and start again because I love plants. I love, love, love plants. Lunatic Friend says they make their fly in South and Southeast Texas each year and they come into Houston. What do they make? My mom has COPD, but thankfully not on oxygen. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Are you familiar with the grandparents' story of monarch butterflies at your party? No, but I got some pods from my sister-in-law a couple years ago, and I hatched and released a couple of monarch. That was a fun learning thing. That was fun. That was very fun. Uh, I have a pond that is more like an enlarged drainage ditch. Infested with muskrats, snapping turtles. Oh my! Spaghetti. Well, how do you have what? Like this is like a major pond or a handmade pond. Oh wow, that's amazing. So I don't want to mess with that CO2. Too complicated for me. I would have to say at the moment it's too complicated for me as well. That's why I took the seminar or that I wanted to learn more. And I know there's people in the chat and everything that understand it better. So trust me, I'm not gonna just turn it on and say, let's go. I gotta figure out what is that I'm missing? What is that I need to do? Here's uh, Greg's planted advice is don't turn it on until you are completely confident that you understand how everything works. Thank you, Greg. That is exactly what I was thinking. This will give you the best chance for success. I can't imagine not using CO2 now. Exactly. And it's not just with CO2. It's the same thing with building my dry sump, my sump for my 180-gallon. Uh, I couldn't fathom what it is I was missing with the, the two down and the up and the, how it gets connected. And then if I had to take out the filter and it's all connected and glued in, how do I get? So I had to break it down piecemeal, watch video after video, studied the stuff on BRC, looked at some more diagrams, and then Greg was just giving me a good hint, like how to take it off. So if I had the cleaner to do it, now I'm confident I'm ready to build it. There's some things I'll build blindly or do blindly and learn as I go. The life of those fish is not worth it. And the life of those fish and plants is not worth it. So I am going to take my time and I got to get it, but I will get it. Best I get up and feed the fish and turn all the lights on. You're turning your lights on? What, what what country are you in that you're turning lights on at this time of night? For me, it's 8 o'clock at night. There's also another butterfly, butter, monarch butterfly from Africa. Ooh. It needs dredge. Oh. But how do you how do you remove a snapping turtle? It's like, have they made this their home? Have they nested there? Like, don't they keep coming back? Are they like my bullfrogs? I put five tadpoles in how many years ago? Now these buggers are like this big. They're beautiful. It, I love the music they make, the croaking. I love those big ass bullfrogs. And I think they take care of the mice population a little bit outside. 
I do, I do. Because they're huge. I also have old roots in Canada war against what? You guys are all talking all deep like that. So yes, I want to get a better understanding. There's so many pros and cons. It does scare the PDD out of me. But after listening last night, I think I'm more equipped now. And in like a couple days, there's Bucks County Aquarium Society. I'll go and talk to more people, some that were there, some that use it. I'll get more experience, more information. I think the only thing I'm missing, aside from that fancy ass controller, is the bubble counter and the diffuser. But that fancy controller is what really interested me. Because it was almost like the, the things I put on my uh, all my reptiles have the thermostats. So that if there's a problem, it indicates and shuts it off. That's what this controller did. I kind of really like that fail safe. Now, obviously, if the solenoid, and I th always thought it was a solenoid, but it's a solenoid, goes bad and it's bad open, even the controller is not going to shut it off. That's why I have to learn how to read these these things to see if is it going down too fast, too slow. Do some pH testing because that it's not proof positive, but it's a good indicator that it's off. And he said extra purling. If you see your plants purling, because I hear people saying, oh, the plants are purling, it's a beautiful thing. But it could also be a sign that there's too much CO2. Did I get that right, guys? Did I get that right? Frogs eat mice? Yes, they do, Finn Wiggles. This bullfrog is this big. He's big. I've got a tomato frog that would probably eat a pinky if I put him in there. I won't, but I could. Um, my Pac-Man frog is still kind of small. He's about that big. But my tomato frog, oh my gosh, he's, he's just like, wah, he's just massive. And he doesn't move. He waits for the food to come to him. <laughs> that's that's how you, that's like the movie What's Eating Gilbert Grape when the mom sat there and the dinner dining table came to her and that's how she ate. Like, <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. I hope I didn't get too. Uh, I hope I didn't get too sidetracked. I, I tried really hard not to, but it's hard. It's ten o'clock in the morning where Craig is in Australia. <gasps> Australia has the best reptiles, the best birds. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yes, they stay there. They decimate the bullfrog population. Not sure what's left of the bass. Oh, the bass. Oh, the bass. Forget the controller for now. Okay, big money. It is. It was big money, but I was this close to winning it. This close. I was one number off. And, of course, the one who won it is like, ah, I don't even want it. I'm like, ah. Uh. I was chewing on my nails. I'm like, don't say that. Forget the controller for now, big money. You need a bubble counter, diffuser, and CO2 drop checker. He didn't talk about that. What is a drop? Is the drop checker the, the little little glass thing that you put RO water in and the chemical so that it changes red, yellow, green? Is that what a drop checker is? Ooh. Ooh. I am there then because I'm almost positive that little tiny nano kit came with a bubble counter and a diffuser, and I'm sure I could use those. It was like on the end, it goes down to the bottom. It was a ceramic circle, and it took the bubbles and made them like almost like a fine mist. Not that bubbles are mists, but look like a fine mist. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I will forget the controller, but that controller looked pretty fancy and pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I am going to test for pH. I got to decide, do I use that tank or do I do a tank that has absolutely no fish in it and just practice first? Because I can always move it over to the tank I want once I'm confident. Yes, that one with the blue, green, and yellow. Okay. That looked pretty cool. And I do have RO water. I have RO water, RODI water. I don't know if it's different, but I... John and I drink RODI water all the time because I don't trust our water system. And we do remineralize the stuff that we drink, but we don't remineralize the stuff that I put in the, not in general, the stuff in the tanks. Awesome. You guys are so, so helpful. It is eight o'clock and we are going over to Kaler's Aquatics and look at, here's another one of Rack's artwork. Rack Cross Bird Garden, man. Amazing guy. 
You guys are amazing. Thank you for the super chats. I can't believe how fast the drop checker monitors changes in pH. That's what I need. So then I don't have to test it all the time. Yes, that is what I'm going to do. So thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all the, the tips and tricks. And, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> but before we go, I am going to put on my daughter singing my theme song. So I hope you enjoy. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, so come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.